Hi there, in this video we're going to be finding the inverse for this matrix A that we have right here. And we're going to be doing the long way to do that. There's several ways to find the inverse of a matrix. Uh, so the, the particular method we're going to be using, first step of it is to write out the matrix again. So 1, 2, 3, uh, 2, 5, 6, 3, 6, and A10. We're going to be dropping a line on the right hand side. Sorry, I can do it better than that. Draw, drop a line, then include an identity in there. So the identity is one is well it's this what you see right here you could be very familiar with it we're just going to include that there alongside it and kind of shove it inside the matrix now we're, what we're going to be doing here is we're, we're going to be changing this matrix here the matrix a into its row reduced echelon form basically we're going to be changing it to look like this one right there now the trick the, what, what's actually going on is that every single row operation we perform on this to change it into that the row reduced echelon form we're going to also perform those raw operations on this. And that's going to change this into the inverse of A. So that's what's going to be happening in this video. So to actually, so one of the first steps to change it into is row reduced echelon form. I'm going to multiply the top row by negative two, add it to the second row. Then I'm going to multiply it by negative three, add it to the third row. And that should get a bunch of zeros for these two terms right there. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to have one, and I'm going to leave everything else alone. So I still have my one, zero, zero over there. Uh, these now are going to be a zero there and a zero below it. So I'm multiplying it by negative two. So negative two here, mu or multiply it by negative two. So I'll make it a negative four, add on to five. That's a one. Then we have a negative two, multiply three, negative six, add on to six, a zero. Negative two, add on to this, because remember we're performing the same row, row operations to the other part. So negative two, multiply one is negative two, add it to the second row, negative two down here. And that should, we still have a one there, mind you. So let's put the one and nothing else should change. Now for the last um, last row, we're multiplying the top row by negative three and adding it to downward. Uh, negative three times one adding to a three would be just zero. So we wrote that down. Negative three times two is negative six. Add into positive six, zero. Negative three times this is negative nine. Add into positive 10, that's a one. Over here, negative three times three, we have a negative three here, and that's all it's gonna be changing. Make sure you include the one right here. It's easy to forget that and kind of screw yourself up a bit. So include everything. Everything should should be pretty fine right now. So there's two last steps that we can take. The first step is multiply the second row by two, negative two rather, and add it to the first row. Let's do that. I'm taking it in baby steps because I don't want to make any mistakes in this video and have to do it over or something. So that's good. Um, multiply the second row by negative two, add it to the top. So negative two times negative two is positive four, add it to one, there's gonna be a five here. Negative two times this is negative two up here. And that's all we're gonna have. And let's write down everything else that we do have here. Now for the very last step, I'm gonna multiply the third row by negative three and add it to the top row. Uh, so negative three, add it to the top row. That'll get rid of this three right here and it'll finally be in its row reduced echelon form. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll have one, zero, zero, put that down there. And so multiplying the third row by negative three will give me positive nine, add on to five, that's 14. And zero is nothing, so a negative two. Last, so right here we're multiplying by negative three, so negative three right there. And that's all we're, that's all the operations we're actually performing. So zero, one, zero, 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 one. And if we, if I did this correctly and didn't make any mistakes in my arithmetic and all of that, this here should be the inverse of A. But specifically, the inverse is going to be this part right there. So the inverse of A, which I'll write like this, inverse of A, that's an A right there, is equal to, equal to all of this right there. Found the inverse. And if you want to confirm this yourself, you can actually multiply so let me change colors here, if I can. Um, if you multiply the inverse of A, the one you found, by the original A matrix, you should get the identity. So you should get a matrix that looks like this. Remember, the identity is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. You should get this again if you multiply the inverse by the original matrix. That's a way to confirm your answer if you're right. But checking my notes, this is the correct matrix, so you don't have to worry about this one being wrong. So thank you for watching. This is how you find the inverse of a matrix. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section below, and I hope you're having a fantastic day.